Hello everybody, Tom from nice. IGN here, and earlier this week I got to play a whopping 16 hours of Cyberpunk 2077. I put out a full preview of that, you can go check that out, but I also wanted to see what your guys' burning questions were that I didn't necessarily answer in that preview. So we put out a call on Twitter and on YouTube, well, and we took your know, questions, know, the most popular ones, the most frequently asked ones, and I'm going to try to answer what I can. Kicking things right off, probably the most popular uh, question we got was what is driving like in the game? That's not really something I talked about during the preview itself, but it's a totally fair question because you are going to spend a lot of time driving around Night City uh, and, and it just didn't sort of strike me as very notable, I guess, is my impressions of it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like, you know, Gran Turismo. You're not going to, it doesn't feel like a crazy, crazy driving game or anything like that, but it felt smooth enough. Um, I enjoyed just kind of seeing the sights, the interiors of cars and the looks of cars are really, really immaculately detailed. Uh, notably, I spent most of my time... Bana, ya bu, ben bu cümleleri beğenmedim. Bu cümle de biliyor musun? Kız güzel mi? Şeker. Abi güzel mi diyorum? Şeker. Tatlı. O bu yani. Driving cars in third person and then motorcycles in first person. Sempatik. Mostly personal preference, like I don't really like driving mo in most games in first person, uh, but motorcycles I felt like I, I actually really, really loved driving motorcycles even more than cars. I ben de işte bak ben de abi do bu arada harbiden araba sürme başta az gibi olacak. Uh, araba sürme başta az ama motor kullanacağım. Allah'tan ben full motor kullanacağım abi. This game because they were so. Uh, so I ben, ben zaten I motor kullanacağım abi. Spots, motor güzel oldu belli zaten. Weave in and out of people and because Night City is a very dense city full of lots ben, of ben motor kullanacağım zaten. You're going to be taking a lot of turns. Bilal DevTech on Twitter specifically asked if the driving felt slow because it apparently looked slow uh, in some of the gameplay previews. Some of the earlier worst cars you drive are definitely slower, mm. but uh, at one point I stole a really, really high-end sports car, and that was going much, much faster in a much more noticeable way. So it's going to vary throughout the game. Okay, mom. Mom. Another common question we got on YouTube was that from some of the gameplay videos out there, the world looked very empty, that there weren't many people in it, there wasn't much okay. stuff around. Uh, you know, and that's something I, I think I probably only comes across in like the gameplay trailer. When I was playing the game, it felt like there were a lot of people, especially when you're walking around really busy sort of market areas, it really, really feels like a populated world. Um, that wasn't really a concern of mine. When you're moving faster, and especially in certain areas like the outskirt areas, when you're kind of getting out of Night City proper, those areas definitely are less populated, but that's also uh, the flip side where you're going to see, you know, a lot yani more nature, a lot more cactuses and plants and that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool how much the neighborhoods like that can feel diverse from each other. I, I liked that part. And so, no, I wouldn't say that the world felt empty in my experience, especially in some Bence of the shopping. Olma. Bence abi. Bence olmamalı çünkü şöyle bir şey var. Evet grafikleri kısmak için NPC ayarını kısabilirsin ama onu kısarsan sen oyunun tamamen zevkini sikeceksin. Witcher'la aynı değil bu. GTA ile Witcher'la aynı değil. Yani çok farklı. Kind of market areas. There's a lot of stalls. I will say I was surprised that how kind of those kısarsın. stalls, like food stalls and that sort of thing were actually interactable. There's only some very specific ones that are actual shops and then there's a lot that are just there to to kind of be set dressing. That was a little bit disappointing. It made the world feel a little bit less interactive, but hmm. I wouldn't describe it as empty by any means. Evet, orada da shop yapabilmek isterdim. O adam RDR kötü demişti. Adam bu adam RDR kötü demedi. RDR'nin pace'ini beğenmemişti. Yani o herifin incelemesini tam okuyun. Yani kötü kötü bir inceleme değil bu arada o bence. Çünkü RDR herkese gidebilecek bir oyun değildi. Yani çok çok doğru bir incelemeydi bence. Herkese gidecek bir oyun değildi ki mesela ben de RDR kötü bir oyun değil ama bence çok slow burn bir oyun. 
A very popular question from our YouTube was from Daniel Harrison, who asked, how dense would you say the verticality is to this game, i.e. how many of those skyscrapers are explorable? And that was uh, a, mm. similar to another question from Adam Garcia, who also asked how many interiors are accessible, uh, buildings, rooms, not necessarily separate separate separate separate separate. Separate. And uh, this bad, is yeah. maybe going to be like, sound like a disappointing answer, but I don't think it's as disappointing in practice as it will, which is not many of them, right? I think there's this perception that maybe this is one of those games that... Redire It's acayip a... saltı çoğu insana gidiyor demek ki. Redire 2'nin çok satmasının sebebi şeyden çıkması. Yani Redire 2 çok satmış olabilir ama birçok kişiye gitmiyormuş ki Redire online bomboş. Yani o açıdan bakacaksak yani Redire online'a bakıyorsun abi. Ya yani 40 TL'ye Redire online çıkartıyor. Bunu niye çıkartıyor? GTA online'a çıkarmadı. Not a huge, huge open world. It's big, but it's not like as massive as some other RPGs. But there's all these buildings. There's all these places you can go. Most of the buildings, like in many city games, are not actually enterable at any time. And similarly, when you get in an elevator to go up to uh, a certain floor on a skyscraper, like your old cowboy apartment is. You usually only have like one or two button options in terms of floors you can actually go to at a given hmm. time, right? This is not going to be a game where you can go into absolutely every building, see absolutely every floor. Mantıklı gidemezsin But zaten. The reason that's not much of like, I don't really see that as like a terrible thing is because A, like what would you be doing in all those buildings with no reason to go in them anyway, I guess. And B, God, I did find a lot of that. locked doors that were like, probably going to be used for certain other quests. So Güzel. the advantage of the verticality and kind of the scope of Night City is not just oh you can go into every building but oh a quest can send you into any building. Right? That's a very important distinction is that you can get a quest that sends you into a building you've never been in that was two blocks down from where you started the game and suddenly it's a completely fresh area and familiar territory. Hmm. Güzelmiş bu arada. Another common question we got was about melee, which I didn't talk about much in my melee on YouTube. Ask how do you think it's possible to do a full melee playthrough? And Blake James also asked how is melee combat, katanas, etc. Melee is okay, right? It's not. I said this in my preview. Combat wasn't exactly the thing that blew me away anyway, and I think melee kind of just like folds into that. It was really fun. I did find a katana at one point, and it was extremely fun to. Put some points into perks that were higher melee damage. Get some cyber augments that gave me more armor. You know that sort of thing, and just run into the fray and start cutting people up. That was really really fun. That melee is actually fairly orada. sort of simple, right? It's got a light attack, a heavy attack to break guards, and then you can guard yourself and also uh, press guard right when you get hit, right before you get hit, to do a kind of counter punch. Don't don't don't so don't don't there's you. there's that sort of the building yeah, blocks that's that there, and there are these bare knuckle boxing sort of side quest fights you can do to to play. With that stuff, I think the tools are definitely there to make melee a playstyle. If you want to lean into that, right? They they have a lot of options, just like they do with a lot of things in this game to support different playstyles. Um, it's not deep enough. Galiba boyunda da hiç adam öldürmeden bitirebiliyorsun. Enough in what I played in the first 16 hours to make me want to only go melee, but that might differ for you. Another common question we got was about life paths. Specifically, Jack Jones asked, "How significant is your life path choice?" And Sloan asked, "How often do you wonder how different the story would be if you had chosen a different path?" I think this is a great question. You get to choose one of three life paths at the beginning of the game. It's a big decision right away, but I wouldn't overly stress too much about it. Uh, the life path determines the very, very, very beginning of the game. You kind of get a very customized intro, and then the feeling I got from after that, and obviously I haven't played through the whole game, so I don't know the major impacts if it comes into play later. Bu arada şöyle bir şey var. Bu adamlar 16 saat oynadı, ilk 7 saati prolog. Öyle bir şey var yani. Haberiniz de olsun. Other stuff differs later, but basically what it was is that I then got different, unique dialogue choices for that life path. So I went with the corpo life path. And essentially what that did is anytime I was talking to suits, right, talking to like higher up corporation people, it made those conversations extremely easy for me. And not in like a bad way. It was like, oh, I knew exactly my character was evet, from this world and I knew exactly what to say in that situation şey to kind of 
Ya bütün oyunu değiştirmek zorunda değil karakterlerden geldi. Ama o bölgedeki yeah, insanlarla like, daha rahat konuşabilmem lazım. Mesela Nomad Sam Corporation'a konuşurken bok gibi zorlanmam lazım. Çok zor olmam lazım. Ben hepsini oynayacağım. Ben bu yayında Sitki'de başlayacağım. Nvidia'da Nomad oynarız büyük ihtimalle. Kendi başıma da Corporate oynayacağım. Balaji Asari on YouTube asked, "How does character customization have an impact on the game slash gameplay, considering it's a first-person perspective game?" Uh, this is a fun question because the answer is not a whole ton. Uh, this is specifically, at least, with when it comes to cosmetic customization. Uh, I kind of jokingly said this to some people before earlier in the week, but. Essentially, make sure you're happy with your fingernail choice. There are a lot of fingernail options, and that's what you're going to probably be seeing most in terms of your character customization, because there are no, you know, cutscenes where you're seeing your person, your character, the marking objects like that. Um, I did see my character every time I open the menu when you're equipping things, right? And you do see your character if you're driving in third person. So there's plenty of opportunities. Occasionally, you look in mirrors, things like that. But by and large, uh. You shouldn't also sweat the first per or the character look customization a whole ton because they give you a lot of choice. It's really cool. It's a very cool character customizer. But yeah, you're not going to be seeing much more than your hands most of the time. Jessica Star on Twitter says, "I'd like to ask about the class system. How much can you multi-class? Did you see respec options or perks, skills that feel game-changing versus just percentage increases?" Yeah, these are all really, really important things that I didn't have a ton of time to touch on, and also I didn't get a ton of time to dig too deeply into in my 16 hours because this is a deep, deep game. Uh, to be clear, there's not well, really a class reliable. system, right? You don't pick, you know, warrior or hacker or whatever. You just sort of pick the attributes that you want, and then you focus on upgrading perks in that way. The thing I really liked about this system is that it was extraordinarily flexible. Like, even if I put all my attributes into physical body, right, the stack called body, then I realized kind of halfway through the game, like, oh man, I'm really hacking a lot. I'm really enjoying that. Your perks for hacking get experience points for that just by doing that thing. So even if you're not specking into that skill or you hadn't previously been, yes, you'll still be rewarded for that. using it in a way that then empowers those skills more, and then you can start putting more attributes points into it and unlock more skills and stuff. It, so there, it's very very flexible in terms of if you want to be a big burly dude who also hacks a lot or a really stealthy person. Well, it's been sort of hacks a lot like, to almost opportunity to Çok mix zor. all those attributes and perks together. Uh, and also, yes, I did think that there were. You know, there it's a it's a healthy mix of percentage increase perks and really cool new things. Like the cool stat has a perk that you can unlock called Cold Blooded that gives you a buff that uh, every time you kill someone, evet, it gets yani a buff. And you can increase that perk to have çok, more çok, stacks çok, çok of that buff as you değil. chain kills yani. together, and then you can also. İngi oyun olması that için her şeyi mükemmel yapmasına gerek yok. Her şeyi iyi yapıp bazı şeyleri mükemmel yapması yeterli. O da RPG'yi yapması istiyorum. RPG'yi yapması lazım. Yani benim verdiğim kararların farklı hissettirmesi lazım. En önemli şey benim için bu oyunda bu. Alexander Almas on YouTube asked, "Do you seem unimpressed with the gunplay? Can you speak on more why you felt that way besides bullet sponge?" Uh, this is something I alluded to earlier. It's a little bit of a tricky thing to explain because it's a lot for you to feel. Like I felt like the weapons were just kind of fine early on. Allah, bir tane mermi vuramadı ama. High recoil. It felt like enemies were pretty bullet spongy. Could take a lot of hits. And there wasn't just a lot to wow me. What I will say is that as I and I do mention this in my preview, as I got deeper into that system, I started unlocking new abilities, new augments, new weapons. Ah, ben zaten bak açık açık söylüyorum arkadaşlar. Ben silah olarak şeyi kullanıyorum. Bir adet shotgun alacağım bu shotgunlardan. Diğerinde de smart pistol alacağım. Adamın kafasını sokacağım, vuracağım ama beni uçuyor. Kind of changing it up so that it was less just like a first-person shooter. I think when when you're just comparing it to a first-person shooter, because that's what it looks like bak, on the surface, it şey. is an underwhelming sort of bak, gunplay. Bing. It's fun. It's fun. It's just not like doing anything to blow you away. 
Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's all those little things of just sort of like how it felt and how quickly I was taking damage and had to retreat and heal. But then as you get more empowered, those things started to sort of go away. So this is one where I, I can't make a final determination on yet. You really got to play the whole game or more of the game to figure it out, I think. Michael on Twitter asked, what's the difficulty like? This is a really good question. There were four difficulty options that I saw. Uh, going from basically story mode, where it's just super, super easy. I played on normal, which is the second from the highest, basically hard above it. Uh, and it was challenging at times. It really was. You've got to be smart about how you play. Exactly this being an RPG, you're going to be quick saving a lot. Like, hard I was smart, saving yeah. before absolutely every single fight. Mm. There's going to be some saves coming involved there for some people, for sure. Because it's easy to get overwhelmed, and it's easy to make a mistake. Uh, or just kind of get caught off guard and get killed, and you got to reload a checkpoint. That said, this also depends a lot on what PC sort of mission you're on, right? Because every mission okay. has different levels, and so if you go into an area of Night City and start taking on gang members that are listed as a very high danger level in on the map, you're probably going to get your butt kicked. And there are these enemies that are marked literally with a skull that are just like, this is too high a level for you, don't go near them, and they'll they'll whoop you, really. But if you're sticking to, you know, more lower level guys, or you're focusing on things that are within your your level it can be a lot easier there are a lot of little random fights scattered all over night city and if you just sort of jump into a random little one here and there those skirmishes can go oh, by pretty yeah, quick and pretty pretty uh, how it gets you know progresses as you level up and deeper into the game and that sort of thing i can't say i only got 16 hours in to what feels like a very very large rpg uh, but at least early on, it feels like there's a good mix of some easier görmedik. missions and some pretty challenging stuff. Is her şey, you know, her her şey being, saat. being smart about how you play. Daha fazla şey göstermediler. Bunu da söylediler. İlk dört saat dışında hiçbir şey görmedik. Shawshank Saxena on YouTube asked, "You told us to temper expectations and that the game is a slow burn. How would you compare it to Red Dead Redemption 2?" Now I'm gonna say something controversial right away, which is I didn't really enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2 very much. I thought it was a beautiful game. I thought it was a technically impressive game. I thought it was way too slow and just kind of tedious in a lot of its activities. Doğru. Ben de katılıyorum. This. Bu arada ben buna ben de katılıyorum. Yani kötü bir oyundu lafına katılmıyorum. Ama yavaş bir oyundu. Kesinlikle çok yavaş bir oyundu. Yani. Ve doğruydu bu arada. Yavaş olması doğru bir karardı. Mesela hani oyunu öyle dizayn etmişlerdi. Buna katılıyorum ama mesela bir tane poker masasına oturmanın animasyonu 30 saniye sürünce bir, artık bir yerden sonra rahatsız ediyordu. Yani niye öyle olduğunu anlıyorum. Yani niye böyle olduğunu anlıyorum. Dizayn olarak yani Oyunu sizi daha adapte ediyor. Çünkü hani her şey çok gerçekçi. At sürmesinden tut poker oynamasına kadar her şeyin animasyonu var ve var. bu oyuna sizi direkt adapte ediyor. Anlayışa karşılıyorum ama bana göre değil bu. Yani bu bana göre değil işte. Yani herkes öyle geri gitmemesinin sebebi o. This does not feel like that to me. This feels slow like an RPG feels slow. Right? Anybody who's played maybe, and this is going to be a weird comparison given Cyberpunk looks like a first person shooter, but anybody who's played something like Divinity 1, right, you're stuck in that first town for something like four hours before you even leave it to fight your first zombie. That's a slow paced RPG. And it's, I'm not saying Cyberpunk is that slow because I think even that was a little too slow, but it's a different thing than Red Dead Redemption 2's slowness where it kind of made you just move very slow and the things you were doing were very deliberate. It's not that it feels like it has that sort of deliberate, this is the pace it wants you to go at. It's just that the focus isn't ha, always okay. on action, is what I meant by it being slow. The focus isn't always on getting gunfights, go crazy, shoot people, like you would think from a first person shooter in this futuristic world full of crazy guns. It feels like an RPG, and it comes with işte, the pace that you need. Yeah, yani her zaman çatışmak zorunda değil. That's all I meant by tempering expectations. Reklamlarda öyle gözükmüyor ama oyun. E tabii ki de oğlum reklamlarda böyle tanıtamazsın. Reklamda arkadaşlar marketingde ne yazık ki oyunları ratata go brr pat pat pat diye tanıtmak zorundasın. Çünkü insanlar geri zekalı. Bunu bekliyor abi herif. Tabii ki de öyle yapacaksın abi. 
Ya bu arada öyle de oynayabiliyorsun. Ya işin komik tarafı da öyle oynayabiliyorsun bu oyunu. Yani sen gidip aksiyonla oynayabiliyorsun abi oyunu. Ama oyunun asıl şeyi o değil. And finally a quick one I wanted to hit was from House of Tides on YouTube who asked is there any indication that there's an end game Skyrim-esque radiant quest content content that repeats continues and is sort of infinitely replayable after the main story that sort of thing. This is a great question I just didn't want to leave it hanging but I don't know 16 hours in is hard to tell in what is probably going to be very very large. Ya bilmene etkili olamaz ki diğer sahneler. Oğlum sen insanları küçümsüyorsun. İnsanların aptallığını küçümsüyorsun. Bak a ben bu oyun ben bu yayında Hikayeli RPG oynarken cutscene'ini izliyorsun geçsene diyen gördüm. Yani anlıyor musun? Hani cutscene izlenir mi diyen gördüm oğlum. Aa, hikayeli RPG oynadım ya. Dalga geçmiyorum yani. Şey yok tarama yok bilmem ne yok silah yok yani. Böyle oynayan var oğlum oyunu. Adam sadece patlaması... Patlama seviyede aptal mı olduk? Hayır. Patlama seviyede aptal olmadın. Zaten Cyberpunk'ta bunu yapabilirsin. Ama Divinity'de. Hatta Divinity'de şeyi oynarken dedim ya. Dedi herif ya. Neydi? Baldur's Gate 3'ü gösteriyordum. Aynen Baldur's Gate 3'ü oynuyorduk oğlum. Baldur's Gate 3 oynuyorum. Adam hikaye geçsene dedi. Yani Cyberpunk'a dese ben okeyim bu arada. Cyberpunk'a adam RPG olduğu için öyle oynayabilir bu arada ben buna da okeyim. Çat çat çat geçsin abi tarasın abi. Bana ne? Aa Baldur's Gate'e de demezsin. RPG. Uh, I didn't see any immediate indication of that sort of thing. But obviously I was very very early on. So you know we'll, we'll have to see when the final thing comes out. But I hope I hit your questions. Thank you very much to everyone who sent them in to us. This was a lot of fun. It's a different format. Let us know in the comments if you liked it. Be sure to check out our actual final preview if you want my in-depth curated thoughts on what it was like to play 16 hours of Cyberpunk 2077. Artık elim kaşınıyor, elim kaşınıyor. Artık çıksın, çıksın. Delireceğim, kuturdum şu anda. Çık ulan! Aa, vallahi bak buraya geldi, buraya.